In a moment, we will begin the listening comprehension section of the test. Read the directions for section 1 on the screen as you listen to the directions on this recording. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. You may take notes while you listen. You may use your notes to help you answer the questions. Your notes will not be scored. For each question, you will see this icon. This means that you will hear the question. You must answer each question. After you answer, click Next in the bottom right corner to go to the next question. Once you click Next, you cannot return to the previous questions. Click Next now. Part A. Directions. You will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers and choose the best answer. Then, click on the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? A. He does not like the painting either. B. He does not know how to paint. C. He does not have any paintings. D. He does not know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He does not like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. You will have 12 seconds to answer each question. If you do not answer a question in 12 seconds, the screen will move to the next question. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Click Next to go to the first question. Remember, after you click Next, you cannot return to previous questions. Number 1. Have you read the chapter for today's class? Yes, I finished it quite rapidly. What does the woman mean? Number 2. I'm not enjoying this novel at all. Why not read another one, then? What does the woman suggest? Number 3. My flight takes off at 4 o'clock. Then maybe we should leave here around 2 o'clock. Where are they most likely going at 2 o'clock? Number 4. Can I borrow your notes from this morning's math class? Sorry, I was absent today. What does the man mean? Number 5. Do you know when my rent check is due? It must be paid by the 15th of the month. What does the man say to the woman? Number 6. It's cold in here. That's because I opened the window. What does the man mean? Number 7. What did Fred just say to you? He said he was sorry about what happened. What does the woman mean? Number 8. I'm not sure when the next bus comes. Why not look at the schedule? It's posted over there. 
What does the woman say about the car? Number 9. Did you see Kate's performance last night? I did. She moved so gracefully to the music. I was really impressed. Who is Kate most likely to be? Number 10. Did you already get your grade in physics? Unfortunately, I did, and I didn't pass. What does the woman mean? Number 11. This course is much harder than I expected. You can say that again. What does the man mean? Number 12. Did you correct the paper before you turned it in? Yes, the paper was thoroughly checked for errors. What does the man mean? Number 13. I think the professor is not very pleased with me. Why? What happened? The professor was upset because I was tardy to class today. What does the man mean? Number 14. Don't you think the stereo we looked at was awfully expensive? Let's see if we can find a better price at another store. What does the man suggest? Number 15. Is the guitar the only instrument that you play? No, I also play the piano and the trumpet. Who is the man most likely to be? Number 16. Did your new television cost very much? I was surprised that it was so cheap. What does the man say about the television? Number 17. You really need the prerequisite before you take this course. I'll say. What does the woman mean? Number 18. I didn't know you had a car. I just bought it. What does the woman say about the car? Number 19. I'm thinking about moving into a new apartment. It would be a good idea if the apartment is close to school. What does the woman mean? Number 20. I have three papers to write this quarter. I don't know how I'm going to get them done. Why don't you start on them now instead of waiting? What does the man suggest? Number 21. 
Mary hurt her foot really badly playing tennis. Do you know where she's going? She's on her way to the emergency room. Where is Mary most likely going? Number 22. Are you going to the dance tonight? No, I'm not. I really don't feel like going out tonight. What does the man mean? Number 23. I got 9 out of 10 questions right on the quiz. So did I. I just missed the last question. What does the man mean? Number 24. Do you know when we'll see our final grades? Sorry, I'm not sure when grades will be mailed out. What does the woman mean? Number 25. Do you know the poem that we're supposed to learn for today? I learned it by heart. What does the woman say about the poem? Number 26. There are two lectures, one at 6 o'clock and one at 8 o'clock. Which should we attend? Let's go together to the first lecture rather than the second. Then we'll be done earlier. What does the man suggest? Number 27. You need to get some clothes cleaned? There's a great place on Miller Avenue. They'll clean your clothes for a reasonable price. Thanks. I'll go there right now. Where is the woman most likely going? Number 28. Are we in time to meet the flight? The plane is still in the air. It's circling the airport. What does the woman mean? Number 29. I think we should walk to the game rather than drive. Me too. It'll be almost impossible to find a place to park. What does the man mean? Number 30. I'm going to study really hard this week. I need to get a really good grade on the exam on Friday. Me too. What does the woman mean? Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations and answer questions about them. While you listen, you will see the answer choices for the questions that follow. After you hear each conversation, you will hear the questions one at a time, and you will see the answer choices on the screen. After you hear a question, read the answer choices and click on the best answer to the question. You will hear the conversations and the questions about them only one time. Now, we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Click Next to go to the next screen. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two friends. The conversation is about a trip to Carlsbad Caverns. Did you have a good vacation? I did. It was really exciting. I went with some friends to visit Carlsbad Caverns. Oh, I've heard of Carlsbad Caverns, but I've never been there. 
I'd like to go someday. You should. It's really amazing. The main cavern is one of the largest caverns in the world. It's called the Big Room, and it's really big. It's as big as 14 football fields. Is the Big Room the only cavern there? Oh, no. There are actually around 80 caverns, but only two of them are open to the public, and one more is open only to scientists. So, of the 80 caverns, people only go into three of them? Yes. And is it difficult to get down into the Big Room? There are two ways to get into the Big Room. One easier way and one harder way. The harder way is to go down into the cavern on foot. The easier way is to take an elevator down into the cavern. And which way did you go? The easier way or the harder way? We went down on foot, but the next time I go there, I'll take the elevator instead. Number 31. What is stated about the big room? Number 32. Approximately how many caverns are there in Carlsbad? Number 33. How many ways are there to get to the big room? Number 34. What does the woman say about getting to the big room? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between two students. The conversation is about a geometry course. Are you taking geometry next semester? Yes, I am. Are you? I am, too. Which section are you taking? I'm not sure. There are two different sections of geometry next semester. One is at 10 o'clock Monday through Friday, and the other is at 2 o'clock Monday through Friday. Do you know which section of geometry you're taking? I'm taking the 2 o'clock section of geometry, for sure. You don't want to take the morning section of geometry, the one at 10 o'clock? Wouldn't you prefer to have class in the morning instead of the afternoon? I'd prefer not to take the afternoon geometry section, but I have to take it. I can't take the morning section because the English class I'm taking meets only at 10 o'clock. Because the English class is at 10 o'clock, I have to take the geometry class at 2 o'clock. Well, I know I'm going to take geometry next semester, but I don't think I'm going to take the afternoon class. The morning class sounds better to me. Then I guess I won't see you in geometry class next semester. Number 35. What is stated about the geometry course? Number 36. How many days per week does the geometry course meet? Number 37. What does the woman decide to do? Number 38. What does the man decide to do? Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks and answer questions about them. While you listen, you will see the answer choices for the questions that follow. After you hear each talk, you will hear the questions one at a time, and you will see the answer choices on the screen. After you hear a question, read the answer choices and click on the best answer to the question. Answer the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in the talks. You will hear the talks and the questions about them only one time. Here is an example. Listen to a professor talk to his class about a television program. 
I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that'll be shown this coming Thursday. It'll be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. The subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now, listen to a sample question. What is the main purpose of the program? On the screen, you read A. To demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B. To discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C. To explain the workings of the brain. D. To dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, what is the main purpose of the program, is C, to explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Now, listen to another sample question. Why does the professor recommend watching the program? On the screen, you read, A, it is required of all science majors. B, it will feature the professor's research. C, it can help viewers improve their memory skills. D, it will help with coursework. The best answer to the question, why does the professor recommend watching the program is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now, we will begin Part C with the first talk. Click Next to go to the next screen. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a talk by a naturalist. The naturalist is discussing a bird, the Arctic tern. Today I'll be talking about the Arctic tern, which is an interesting and amazing bird. This bird is interesting and amazing because it travels so far. Every year the Arctic tern flies from the Arctic Circle in the north to Antarctica in the south and back. This means that the Arctic tern travels from the North Pole to the South Pole and then returns to the North Pole every year. It does this every year, year after year. It spends its summers at the North Pole and then flies south all the way to Antarctica in the winter months. This is a round trip of 22,000 miles every year. Arctic terns can live to a rather old age for a bird. An Arctic tern can live to be 30 years old. It's interesting to think about how many miles an Arctic tern flies over an average lifespan. Over an average lifespan of 30 years, an Arctic tern flies almost a million miles. Number 39. What is unusual about the Arctic tern? Number 40. What is true about the Arctic Tern's trip? Number 41. What is stated about the Arctic Tern's lifespan? Number 42. Approximately how far does an Arctic tern travel over its lifetime? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a lecture by a professor in a history course. The lecture is on the election of 1948. How many of you know what happened in the presidential election of 1948? Well, in this election, one newspaper made a very big mistake. The two leading candidates in the election of 1948 were Harry Truman from the Democratic Party and Thomas Dewey from the Republican Party. Before the election, everyone thought that Dewey was going to win the election. After the election, one newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, printed the paper before all the votes had been counted. 
the newspaper editors, like everyone else, were certain that Dewey was going to win. The giant headline in the paper said, Dewey defeats Truman. Unfortunately, the newspaper was wrong. Dewey did not defeat Truman. Instead, Truman was elected President of the United States. A very famous photograph shows Truman on the day after the election. In the photograph, Truman is holding up the newspaper with the headline, Dewey defeats Truman. And Truman has a very big smile on his face. Number 43. What is the main point of the lecture? Number 44. What was expected before the election? Number 45. What did the Chicago Tribune do? Number 46. How did Truman react to the headline? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a lecture by a professor in a geography course. The lecture is on sun showers. Next, I'd like to talk about sun showers which are rain showers that take place when the sun is shining. I'm sure you all understand that rain develops in rain clouds. But do you understand how it rains when the sun is out? First, let me explain about how rain happens, and then I'll explain how sun showers happen. Rain comes from moisture in clouds. As clouds move through the sky, tiny drops of water move up and down within the clouds. When drops hit each other, they join together to make bigger drops. As the drops of water move more and more, they join together with more and more drops, and they become bigger and heavier. When they become big enough and heavy enough, they fall to earth as raindrops. Because raindrops are created in clouds, it commonly rains when the sky is cloudy. Sometimes, however, it rains when there are no clouds in the sky, and these showers are called sun showers. This can happen when the rain clouds are very high in the sky. When the clouds are very high, it can take 20 or 30 minutes for raindrops to fall from them. While the raindrops are coming down in this 20 to 30 minute period, it's possible for the clouds that produce the rain clouds to blow away. This is the situation in which sun showers can occur. Number 47. What are sun showers? Number 48. What do water drops do inside clouds? Number 49. When do sun showers occur? Number 50. What has happened to the clouds that produce a sun shower? This is the end of the listening section. Click Next to go to the Structure and Written Expression section. You can take off your headset at this time.